welcome to my channel. This video is about walking your dog on a leash. This can be a struggle for a lot of dog owners and it's something that you typically think needs to be trained and you need to teach your dog how to walk on a leash. But I'm going to suggest thinking of walking your dog on a leash as a partnership. You need to learn how to walk your dog on a leash just as much as your dog needs to learn. You want to think of walking with your dog as a partnership. Think of it as a dance where you both have to learn the steps and you both have to consider each other and it really is a partnership, something that you do together. It's natural for dogs in their natural instinct to want to stay close to those that they feel safe and protected by, which is you. Your dog wants to be around you. Your dog enjoys your company. Leash walking really is the ultimate test between your partnership with your dog, how you two communicate with each other, how you two are bonded. Don't get worried if you love your dog and you struggle on the leash. That doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong or that, well, it might mean you're kind of doing something wrong, but you can just learn from it and grow and get better. And that doesn't mean that your dog hates you or doesn't want to be around you. It's just something that you've been doing wrong and now you can change that and your dog will love you even more for it. So think of leash walking as two ways. First, think of the leash as something that connects the two of you, not something that controls your dog, not something that keeps your dog hostage, just something that connects the two of you, a tool of communication and connectedness. A leash is not a tool to move or direct or guide your dog. It is a symbol of connection, not a way to control or contain your dog. Also consider what you are doing on your end of the leash. Are you pulling? If you pull, your dog will pull as well. Consider not only what your dog's doing, but what you are doing. This is a partnership. The two of you need to work together and you need to be a role model and a guide for your dog. If you're pulling, your dog will pull as well. So who really is doing the pulling? Next time you take your dog on a walk, maybe think how often you pull. Are you pulling more than your dog? You need to take ownership and responsibility in this relationship and in your part in making walks not that comfortable for you and your dog. This isn't your dog's fault. Your dog's not bad on the leash. You're bad on the leash as well. This is a partnership. So it's important to learn from your mistakes. When you learn from them, you can then prevent them. So don't worry if you've been thinking about things wrong or doing things wrong. This is a new start and you can learn from your past experiences. So some common mistakes in leash walking is taking your dog to places or environments that your dog just isn't ready for. There may be some places that you can't take your dog for a walk, busy parks, places with cars, places with a lot of other dogs on leashes as well, places with children, places that are loud, places near the water. Think about what is triggering for your dog. What makes your dog excited and want to run free or what makes your dog anxious and don't take your dog in those areas or around those things that make them uncomfortable if your dog is barking at cars or other dogs you can't walk your dog in areas where there are cars or other dogs this might make it really difficult and you might be really limited to where you can take your dog just know that this is only for now and eventually you will probably be able to take your dog to these places but start small start in baby steps maybe you can only take your dog for a walk around your backyard, even if it's a small loop that you keep doing and circles, just to get your dog used to being on that leash and connected to you, and get you used to, as well, the tools and techniques needed, the mindset needed to walk your dog on a leash. Another mistake is not yet thinking like partners. This is what I talked in the beginning. You are a partner with your dog. The two of you are doing this together. Your dog isn't trying to upset you or frustrate you. This isn't all your dog's fault. You have to take ownership and responsibility in this partnership. Another mistake is not working together with your dog. 
cooperating with your dog, thinking that you two are something separate. You need to start thinking of the two of you walking together as a unit, working together. Another mistake is not being able to co-regulate with your dog. You need to learn how to co-regulate your emotions with your dog. When you do this, you can expect safe, calm, and happy experiences and walks, and this will spread into all other areas of your life with your dog. It is known in the competitive dog sport world, like agility, that your emotions affect your dog's performance. So take this knowledge that dogs pick up our emotions. They're little sponges that understand how we're feeling. If we're feeling frustrated, angry, scared, stressed, our dogs feel that as well, and they will absorb it and take it in at, on their own. So if you start to get nervous when you see a larger dog coming towards your dog on a walk, your dog will pick that up and think there's something to be nervous about. You need to be able to co-regulate with your dog. And when you notice your dog getting upset, you need to be able to stay calm, stay peaceful and relaxed, and your dog will mimic that emotion. Even if they're upset, they'll see that there's nothing really to be upset about because you're not upset. You're remaining calm. It is important to think of you and your dog in a circle. It's just the two of you in a bubble and you and your dog are working together in this bubble and this circle is a safe, trusting space for you and your dog. Your dog feels safe next to you. Sometimes this bubble is very small and sometimes this bubble can grow larger. When your dog is reactive, lunging, pulling, on the leash, this means that the bubble is very small and your dog isn't feeling safe, calm, and happy inside this bubble because they're reacting, they're becoming reactive. You can learn how to expand your bubble so your dog feels safe, calm, and happy in a variety of situations. And you really only always need to focus on your inner circle. You don't need to worry about what another dog is doing, what another person is doing, what a car is doing. If you and your dog remain in your circle calm and happy, happy and peaceful and relaxed and feeling safe and trusting each other. It doesn't matter what is happening outside of your bubble, outside of your circle. It could be chaos, but if you and your dog are remaining in this peaceful state, you will be able to maneuver, walk through, walk around, get by, whatever is happening on the outside. You need to really build this bubble and keep these feelings of safe, calm and happy for your dog to mirror back. You are your dog's role model. You are your dog's guide. Become really self-aware with how you are feeling on walks and noticing how your dog is feeling. And if your dog is getting upset and you are able to co-regulate, you are able to bring your dog back down to feeling safe, calm, and happy, you will have really peaceful walks no matter what is going on around you or no matter how reactive your dog gets, your dog will check back in with you and your emotions and see that you're okay, so they will learn to be okay. This won't happen right away, especially if you've developed this habit of, or your dog has developed this habit of reacting and pulling and lunging, but know that you can get there over time and with practice. To get there, the most important thing is to remember to stay connected to your dog. When you are disconnected from your dog during walks, your dog will feel anxious, reactive. They will do that pulling and that lunging, that barking, and your dog will also feel unheard. Your dog is communicating with you. Your dog isn't trying to give you a hard time and make this walk frustrating or uncomfortable or embarrassing for you. Your dog is trying to communicate with you, telling you that they are feeling uncomfortable and they're looking at you for that guidance and support and for you to tell them that everything is okay. We will start to pull and yank on our leash, try and pull our dog away from situations or other dogs or other things we don't want them to touch when we are feeling frustrated or anxious or embarrassed or we're feeling uncomfortable and our dog will pick up on that and think that there's something to be anxious about which will then next time they you take them by the same thing, it will just start a chain reaction and become a habit. You also want to think about when you're taking your dog for a walk, you are doing this for your dog and you need to let your dog sniff and smell and greet and 
go at their pace. Don't try and pull your dog or hurry your dog along. If you want to get exercise and you want to run and get your heart beat up but your dog's sniffing, then you need to reconsider maybe taking your dog on a separate walk. Think about your purpose of this walk. The purpose is for your dog to have fun. If your dog isn't having fun, what's the point of the walk? And if you're not having fun, if you're unable to get exercise or do whatever you want to do on your walk, what is the point of it? You might need to take two separate walks or you might need to figure out how you can let your dog be a dog and have fun and you can get whatever you want out of your walk. And again, this doesn't mean that you will never be able to take your dog on a jog or you'll never be able to go with your dog and do these things that you want to do with your dog on a leash. It just means that for now, right now, you can't do it. Your dog isn't ready. If your dog is reactive and pulling on the leash, then your dog isn't ready. We are taking our dogs for a walk. We want this to be enjoyable for our dogs. What are you taking your dog on a walk for? To exercise, to socialize, to sniff, for enrichment, mental stimulation. Figure that out. Know that that is your purpose. When you have an intention and a purpose on the walk, you may feel more calm and relaxed to let your dog sniff, let your dog look around without yanking and pulling on them to move forward or trying to control them. Socialization and mental stimulation is important and walks really can help our dogs fulfill these needs. That means that they will stop and they will sniff and they will do things that you maybe want to pull them away from. And they will also meet other dogs and greet other dogs. And just remember that if another dog seems frightening or scary, that if you and your dog remain in this calm, peaceful bubble, you and your dog will be able to walk right on by that other dog, no matter if that dog is barking, reacting, whatever it's doing, you will remain in your bubble stay connected to your dog. Dogs that are yanked and pulled around on their leash can suffer from a lot of problems such as frustration, anxiety, stress, elevated heart rate, and blood pressure, as well as damage to the neck and the thyroid. When dogs move freely about, they sniff about 33% of the time. Also, it is proven that when dogs sniff, when they can use their noses, they that's naturally calming for them. In general, they will be a lot calmer the more that they are able to use their nose. It's peaceful, it's relaxing to them, and that will spread to other areas of their life where they will just be calmer in general because they're getting that need met. Make your dog's walk enjoyable. Let your dog go at their own pace. Figure out what their pace is. Don't try to speed them up or slow them down. Let your dog enjoy the sights and the smells. Some dogs, my dog Millie, when we have this path that leads to a park and when we get through the path and we see the park, there's wide open fields. There's often a lot of people at the playground, around the field, playing sports or just walking their dogs. She needs a few minutes to stop at that path and just observe and take everything in. If we keep walking right from the path and it's straight into the park and around the field, it becomes too much for her and she gets overwhelmed. She needs to take that minute to just observe and see what she's heading into, what she's walking into. So get to know your dog. What do they need on this walk? Again, be connected, pay attention to your dog. When you do this, your dog's stress overall is reduced and your bond will increase with your dog. You will feel this relationship grow even more than the relationship that you already have with your dog. Letting your dog just be a dog when you're out and about and when you're connected with the leash will really let you see what your dog's personality is like. Every dog is different and unique and every dog has a different personality. Find out the individual that your dog is. It might not be the dog that you had hoped for. Maybe you wanted a dog to go for runs with. Maybe you wanted a dog that was friendly and social. And you have a dog that's more shy. That's fine. Let your dog be your dog. But you need to first discover who that individual dog is and then support them in whatever personality they have. Remember that this is your dog's time. This is your dog's walk. Make it fun, make it enriching, exciting. Let them exercise their body and their noses and their brains. When you do take your dog on a walk with a leash, there are some things to remember. You need to consider your posture. Body language communicates a lot with the dogs. 
what is your presence? What energy is your posture and your presence bringing into this walk? Especially when you come across things that may be triggering or arousing for your dog, remain confident and keep your posture straight and your shoulders back. Show your dog that you've got this and that they can trust you to handle the situation. You understand the world better than your dog does. You understand dangers. Let your dog know that you are confident, you've got this, you can handle it. Dogs do look at our posture and how we carry ourselves to know if they are in a safe situation. Are you showing your dog that you are calm and relaxed and that your dog can be calm and relaxed? It's also important to remember to only take your dog in areas where you can remain calm and relaxed. Areas where you don't think there will be triggers or stressors for your dog. If you find yourself in a situation where your dog is triggered, aroused, gets reactive, have a plan, something that you can do to remain calm and something that you can do to remove your dog from the situation as quickly but peacefully as possible. How can you keep it as stress-free as possible? Remember that pulling and yanking on the leash is not stress-free for your dog. This may mean taking your dog on walks where you can kind of see who's coming, where there's an open field and you can take a route and avoid another dog or avoid something that your dog has shown to be previously triggered and reactive over. Remember to co-regulate and remember to focus on your connection with your dog. You also need to trust yourself and trust your dog as well. Have trust that your dog can handle situations that are stressful, that your dog can co-regulate, that your dog can do this, that your dog can walk peacefully with you without pulling, without reacting. If you decide that you can only take your dog to certain walks or you really are limited to where you can take your dog right now, trust that over time you can expand this area or you can expand the environments that you take your dog to. Once you and your dog feel really confident and comfortable in an area and you've repeated this walk and you feel confident each time, you can choose to expand to another area or go on a longer walk or put your dog in situations that may be a little bit harder for your dog. Don't take a step that's too big, go slow. Use the leash as a tool of communication and connection. When you walk with your dog, you want to always face, both be facing in the same direction, be parallel with your dog, be balanced with your dog, be steady. You want your dog always steady on both feet and you also want to always be steady on both feet. That means not pulling or tugging your dog so that they become unsteady on their feet. They need to feel safe and secure. You also need to communicate with your dog with where you're going to go. You can communicate with your eyes and you can communicate by not pulling or putting pressure on the leash, but kind of like jiggling it, like, like you would kind of the reins of a horse a bit to let them know that we're going to turn, just kind of putting a little extra weight on one side, being gentle about it, but your dog will feel this change in weight, this change in direction. Your dog will also pay attention just if you kind of look with your gaze. So similar if you've ridden a horse before, I have a little bit and I know that when I would look in the direction I want the horse to turn, the horse just turns. Animals are really in tune with body language with our eyes the way we are shifting weight in our body and your dog can really feel that through the leash connection so communicate with your dog you can even say out loud communicate verbally we're going to be turning this way or we're going right or we're going to go this way this way now we're going straight let your dog know what to expect let your dog know where they're going it is important to feel safe and it is important to feel prepared for anything that may cause a stress on your walk, anything that your dog may become aroused. Have an action plan of how you are going to react. Also, use leashes or harnesses or tools on your walk. Maybe you want to bring treats, something so you feel safe and secure, so you feel like you have the most control and that this harness will help and this leash will help. You want to do what makes you feel safe. 
Also in everyday life, notice the times where your dog is naturally by your side, following you through the house, walking with you when you're not with a leash. Notice this and acknowledge it. Say, oh, thanks for sticking beside me calmly and quietly. You can give them a treat or just let them know that you like this behavior. Hey, I like it. You're following me really calmly and quietly around the house and you're sticking really close to my side. Acknowledge it and say, I'm grateful for this. I would love if you could do this when we are outside as well. Or on the walk, you could say, oh, look how calm you were when we walked by that big dog and praise them. Let them know that they're doing a great job when they're walking beside you the way you want them to walk. Let them know that you like that kind of behavior. Even just a smile at your dog, find these natural opportunities where you and your dog are connected, peaceful, calm, and where you and your dog are heading in the same direction together, side by side, in between room to room in your house or walking from the house to the car, wherever you and your dog walk somewhere together, whether that's from the couch to the kitchen, just acknowledge it and let your dog know that you like this calm behavior of you two walking together. Create small opportunities for you and your dog to walk together and invite your dog to walk with you. You can invite them to walk with you in the backyard next to you. If your yard is fenced in and you feel that this is a safe place, create little opportunities where you and your dog are walking side by side in a calm, peaceful manner and acknowledge that. Take your dog on trust building walks. These are walks that you know your dog is going to feel safe, calm, and happy. And take your dog there often so they get in the habit and of feeling safe, calm, and happy on walks. I hope this video was helpful and you got some insight into how you can improve walking your dog on a leash and what you can do in situations where your dog may be reactive on leash or your dog may be pulling and tugging a lot. And if you feel that right now your dog pulls or is too reactive to even take them on a walk, then you need to stop taking them on walks and maybe think about where you could take them off leash. If there are any off leash areas, if you don't yet feel comfortable with your dog off leash, find a space like your backyard or clear the living room and play with them inside. Take your dog for walks around your house. Get them used to being next to you safely, calmly, while connected on the leash. And remember that this isn't forever, this is only for right now, and eventually you will be able to take your dog to other areas, areas that you maybe hoped that you would, and maybe you just started too big right away and you need to Take your dog on little micro walks, even if this is just down the driveway and back to your house or just a few steps from your house and then back. Trust that with time, this will work and you will have safe, calm, and peaceful walks with your dog. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.